Thank you all for being here. Over the past week, more than a dozen suspicious packages have been sent to, through the United States Postal Service to a media outlet, a Hollywood actor, and at least seven high-ranking current and former political leaders in the Democratic Party. This is utterly unacceptable. Political violence or the threat of violence is antithetical to our vigorous system of self-government. It is a threat to that respect for law and process that allows our people to accept legislation, elections, court rulings with which they do not agree. This is the central feature of our system of government. You advocate for your beliefs enthusiastically, but we peaceably and lawfully comply with the results. Please know that from the beginning, this investigative team has made this matter a top priority, focusing their great talents and expertise on neutralizing this threat. They have moved swiftly and professionally, using extraordinary technical expertise to apprehend the one alleged responsible. This is a demonstration of the skill, capability, and determination of our American law enforcement, the best in the world. So I am pleased to participate in this announcement that a suspect is in the custody of the FBI. I want to remind everyone that the defendant in this case, as in every case, is innocent until proven guilty. He has been charged today with five federal crimes, including interstate transportation of an explosive, illegal mailing of explosives, threats against former presidents and certain other persons, threatening interstate communications, and assaulting current and former federal officers. For these charges, the defendant faces up to 58 years in prison. These charges may uh, change or expand as the investigation proceeds. This is a law and order administration. We will not tolerate such lawlessness especially not political violence. And so I want to thank FBI Director Ray and his team, all of our law enforcement partners who are here, ATF, Secret Service, Postal Inspectors, Capitol Police, uh, uh, and New York City Police Department, and the United States Attorney Berman of the Southern District of New York and U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Alabama, Ariana Orsham. Federal, state, and local law enforcement officers from across this country responded immediately to the cause and contributed to this effort. We are proud of each one of them. I want to reiterate the defendant in this case is innocent until proven guilty. But let this be a lesson to anyone, regardless of their political beliefs, that we will bring the full force of law against anyone who attempts to use threats, intimidation, and outright violence to further an agenda. We will find you, we will prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law. And now Director Ray, uh, who's done an incredible job leading this effort over the last few days, he will give us the details of today's important arrest. Chris. As the Attorney General has confirmed, we have arrested Cesar Sayoc in connection with this investigation. As our investigation is still ongoing, I may not be able to answer questions about his background uh, or about his motive. What I can say is that this was a nationwide investigation of enormous scope and of the greatest importance. Our investigation ranged from New York to Delaware, to Maryland, to the District of Columbia, to Florida, to California. And as it always does, the FBI responded with every resource we've got, including our Joint Terrorism Task Forces, our Counterterrorism Division, and our world-renowned experts at the FBI lab in Quantico. But, but and I, I really can't underscore this enough, we did not act alone. As you can see from the agencies and departments represented up here today. A threat of this scope and of this magnitude requires all of us working shoulder to shoulder. 
And today's arrest is a testament to the strength of our partnerships and what we can do when we all work together. I want to acknowledge the many partners who helped in recovering and transporting these IEDs to our lab in Quantico. This is dangerous and highly skilled, specialized work that requires great care, and we're incredibly grateful to all those who helped us in that effort in getting those devices to our lab from around the country. We can confirm that 13 IEDs were sent to various individuals across the country. Each device consisted of roughly six inches of PVC pipe, a small clock, a battery, some wiring, and what is known as energetic material, which is essentially potential explosives and material that give off heat and energy through a reaction to heat, shock, or friction. Though we're still analyzing the devices in our laboratory, these are not hoax devices. I want to focus for a moment on the amazing work of our folks at the FBI lab. Based on their initial analysis, they uncovered a latent fingerprint from one of the envelopes containing an IED that had been sent to Congresswoman Maxine Waters. We have confirmed this fingerprint is that of Cesar Sayoc. There is also a possible DNA connection between samples collected from pieces of two different IEDs mailed in separate envelopes and a sample previously collected from SAOC in connection with an earlier arrest down in Florida. This is phenomenal work with the greatest pressure under an incredibly tight time frame. We see unbelievable work like this on TV and in Hollywood, but to see it up close in reality is something to behold. And we are so proud of our team at the lab for their work in keeping people safe and helping us to find the individual responsible. Late last night, we also turned to our partners in the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for confirmation of this DNA connection, and we want to thank them in particular for their very quick work. I also want to thank the men and women of the FBI's Counterterrorism Division, who remain on high alert every single day to try to keep the American people safe from harm, and who move quickly and efficiently into action every single time. Today's arrest doesn't mean we're all out of the woods. There may be other packages in transit now and other packages on the way. So we need the help of everyone out there, every citizen, everyone in law enforcement, everyone we've got to help with this investigation in the days to come. If you've got any information, please call us on our tip line at 1-800-CALL-FBI or our email line, tips.fbi.gov. No piece of information is too small. Every tip could be the one that leads to something very important. And of course, if you see something suspicious, suspicious activity, please call your local authorities. We need all hands on deck. We need to stay vigilant. Finally, I want to thank our partners. Too many to name from across the country because we cannot do this work alone. Everyone up here today understands that, and we take that to heart every single day as we do the hard work together of protecting 325 million Americans. Now I'd like to turn the podium over to Commissioner O'Neill from the NYPD. Thanks, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. And on behalf of uh, the men and women of the NYPD, and quite frankly, all the people in New York City, I want to commend and thank all of our local, state, and federal law enforcement partners in this effort, including the Attorney General's Office and the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Th Southern District of New York. Our NYPD detectives, along with FBI and ATF agents, postal inspectors, New York State Police, and many others, they are one team on our Joint Terrorist Task Force. The JTTF in New York was the first of its kind in the nation. It's been in business since 1980. Today, there are 300 investigators from 56 agencies. 113 of them are New York City cops. When it comes to terrorism in New York City, the NYPD doesn't do anything without the FBI, and the FBI doesn't do anything without the NYPD. That's a partnership that was forged in fire. 
In my 36 years in policing, our relationship has never been stronger. This case told that story again. New York City cops were side by side with FBI agents and many other agencies in Florida this morning. Together, they brought justice as they always do. The wide experience of our agencies, coupled with the individual expertise of the members of the NYPD Bomb Squad, our highly trained emergency service unit, our Intel Bureau, our Counterterrorism Bureau, our patrol cops, who were the first to respond to CNN, all helped lead to today's arrest. I couldn't be more proud of the work each of them did in this case and the work they do every day. We said from the outset that we would identify and arrest the person or people responsible for these acts. We can make that promise because of the confidence we have in our ability to investigate in a deliberate and precise manner. Today's arrest means that New Yorkers and indeed people across our nation are safe, but as Director Ray said, there might be more packages out there, so everyone still needs to take caution. And if you see something out there, call 911, and in New York City we have a number also, 1-888-NYC-SAFE. I want to thank the members of the public who contacted authorities with information during this investigation. New Yorkers don't back down, they step up every single time. We've been through things like this before, and much worse. I'm never surprised by the unmatched resiliency our city always displays. Thank you also to the media for broadcasting the photos the NYPD released, because it certainly helped workers around our city identify additional packages and help move forward with this investigation. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Berman, United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Five days ago, on October 22nd, law enforcement recovered the first device from a residence of George Soros. Over the last five days, as more packages were found across the country, delivered to former presidents, federal officials, and public figures, our law enforcement community, federal, state, and local, has worked day and night together with other prosecutors from my office to identify and apprehend the perpetrator that has now happened. Today, my office has filed a complaint against Caesar Sayoc, charging him with multiple federal crimes for his insidious conduct. Specifically, the defendant is charged in five counts that include illegally mailing and interstate transportation of explosives and threatening a former president of the United States. As alleged in the complaint, the defendant mailed destructive devices to citizens of this country who currently hold or have held our highest public offices, President Barack Obama, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, former Vice President Joe Biden, former Attorney General Eric Holder, Congressperson Maxine Waters, U.S. Senator Cory Booker, former CIA Director John Brennan, and former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper. The defendant's conduct as charged is cowardly and reprehensible and totally anathema to our democracy. And now the defendant faces a potential total of 58 years in prison. This is an ongoing and active investigation. We will not rest until these crimes are fully investigated and the defendant or defendants are brought to justice. I want to take a moment to thank our partners, the Joint Terrorism Task Force, the FBI, the NYPD, U.S. Postal Inspection Service, New York State Police, the ATF, the hardworking career prosecutors and investigators in the terrorism unit of the Southern District of New York, and I would also like to thank the extraordinary cooperation we received from the Southern District of Florida. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Gary Barksdale. Deputy Chief, United States Postal Inspection Service. Um, first off, like many of my colleagues, I'd like to thank all of our federal partners who participated in this nationwide investigation, the FBI, ATF, Secret Service, New York Police Department, and the many state and local law enforcement agencies who provided valuable assistance. Truly, I can say this is the way law enforcement is supposed to work. This was a massive investigation, was a much a collaborative effort, and was well coordinated with each agency bringing a special expertise to the table. But I would also like to recognize the many postal employees who we think of as our eyes and ears. We appreciate the diligence and awareness. In fact, it was a postal employee this morning that alerted us to one of these suspicious parcels. We in the Postal Inspection Service have a great deal of expertise in responding to and investigating suspicious mail. 
Post inspectors are trained to rec respond and investigate dangerous mail items in the mail. These dangerous mail investigation specialists are highly proficient in the use of state-of-the-art equipment. Fortunately, in this case, none of the devices detonated and there was no injuries. However, postal inspectors will remain vigilant and monitor postal facilities to determine whether there are additional mailings that have not yet been discovered. We will continue to work with our law enforcement partners to ensure the safety of the mail, our postal employees, our customers, and the American public. Good afternoon, uh, Tex Alice, the Secret Service Director. Just as uh, uh, the other uh, speakers have emphasized, I just, just want to comment on the uh, importance of cooperation here. Uh, we were in the forefront of this uh, uh, with uh, receiving early packages on Tuesday and Wednesday and uh, fully engaged with the Joint Terrorism Task Force and other federal partners and just want to acknowledge the great work done by the FBI, ATF, the Postal Service and Inspectors, uh, New York City Police, Capitol Police, and then the different states involved, New York, Florida, California, Delaware, Maryland, and even the District of Columbia. So, and I also want to uh, spend just a few minutes to emphasize uh, how seriously the Secret Service takes these threats, how important it is to uh, provide uh, uh, protection to our uh, protectees, including former presidents and the current president and vice president, and just thank our agents and officers and analysts uh, who not only investigate cyber and financial crime, but provide world-class protection to our protectees. I think they've done outstanding work here. I would uh, just uh, also remark that uh, since Tuesday, along with uh, Director Ray, this has been our number one focus of the agency is to uh, find the perpetrators of these incidents and to bring them to justice. Thank you. With that, I'll take a few questions. Pete? Mr. Ray, can you tell us along the lines of how fast this moved, when did you or folks I uh, isolate the fingerprint? Uh, so each of the devices was being brought uh, through what are called total containment vehicles to our lab, and they were coming kind of seriatim. Uh, and we received some of them. The first two that we received were the devices uh, that were sent to former President Obama uh, and the D.C. package that was sent to Congresswoman Waters. And so the analysis began on that, uh, I think, yesterday. Uh, and we were starting to receive information over the course of the last 24, 36 hours. So it was found yesterday. I don't have the exact time, but that's ballpark. Here. A question for Director Ray and Attorney General Sessions. Can you describe your reaction to when you got word mm -hmm. that there was a latent fingerprint that might lead you to a, a suspect? And also, could you give us a sense of why the devices may not have exploded? But, so what was the second part of the question? Any sense of why the devices did not explode? So on the first part, uh, my reaction to hearing that we had a possible match uh, just validated my unbelievable faith uh, and confidence in the men and women of law enforcement, and in particular of the FBI lab. There's a reason why the FBI's lab is known as one of the very best in the world, and the folks who work there are extraordinary. Uh, and once I knew that they had a print, I was pretty confident that we'd be able to find the right person. As far as the, the devices themselves, uh, it's important to say, as, as is in the complaint, uh, that even if the devices, and we're still trying to determine whether or not uh, they were functional, as they say, so we're doing all kinds of analysis on that to make a definitive determination, but they did contain energetic material, uh, which, if subjected to the right combination of heat or shock or friction, uh, could be dangerous to the public, and the public should treat any device like that accordingly. Yeah. Um, Attorney General Sessions, uh -uh. could you tell us plainly why was he targeting Democrats? I don't know, <laughs> other than uh, what you might uh, normally expect. He uh, may have been a part, appears to be a partisan, but that would be uh, determined by the facts as the case goes forward, and I'm not able to comment on that. Is he cooperating? We're not going to be discussing where the investigation stands at this time. Can you? I'm just, I'm just uh -huh. curious um, what role you think the, the uh, rhetoric in the political arena might have played in this, and, and is that making, giving you more work? We're focused not on the talk, but on the work, the work of the men and women of law enforcement here, and the work that was done over the last week is something that should make every American proud and grateful. And it's too early at this stage for us to be discussing motivation in this particular case. But just to follow up, are you concerned that nasty political rhetoric might motivate someone who's predisposed to violence to act out? 
We're concerned about people committing acts of violence under any motivation. Director, do you believe that he's the only one involved in, in this uh, campaign? And you continue to make reference to other devices that might be out there. Do you have any sense of how many uh, that are still in the street? So, uh, as I said at the outset, and I think the Attorney General said as well, uh, this is very much an active and ongoing investigation. Uh, we do believe that we've caught the right guy, uh, but we also know that this is an ongoing investigation and there's a lot of work still to be done, which means there's still plenty of unanswered questions. We'll do the last question. Oh, well, that, my question. question. Yeah, that was my question. Okay. <laughs> when did you first brief President Trump on having a suspect in custody, and if you could say what was his reaction? I'm not going to get into our discussions with the president. I will say that I received a very nice congratulatory call from the president shortly before heading over here uh, and saw his remarks that he made at the White House. And I think he, like every American, is and should be proud of the unbelievable work that was done not just by the FBI but by all of our law enforcement partners across multiple states in this. I think Commissioner O'Neill said it well. The partnerships that exist in the law enforcement profession right now in this country uh, are extraordinary, are better than they've ever been, and it's, it's exactly what the doctor ordered for this country at this time. Thank you so much. Thank you.